Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Configuration as Code Project meeting. Today is June 17th, and we have a team, uh, Adrian, uh, Joseph, and me on the call. So we'll uh, just discuss um, uh, news related to configuration as code in Jenkins, and then uh, focus on ongoing development and uh, other topics. I also wanted to discuss uh, JCASC uh, roadmap status today, just to check whether we have all option items uh, on the roadmap and whether we need to update statuses. And I guess so that's it. Okay, so regarding news, uh, one is a kind of ongoing thing. We have uh, read only uh, uh, Jenkins configuration, which needs uh, a lot more testing and feedback, though generally it works. Um, there it is, yeah, it's here. So team, uh, were there any new developments uh, regarding uh, the Donga configuration? Uh, not since the last one. The uh, last of it was done during the UX hackathon, which we talked about last mm -hmm. session. Okay. Uh, yeah, so one thing uh, regarding that, I finished uh, Demo Jenkins configuration as code. Well, it kind of works and now it has recent plugins and uh, yeah, it supports a read-only mode which can be used for testing uh, of this configuration though i still need to migrate uh, the demo to jcask because now the demo is largely configured by uh, groovy scripts uh, but uh, if anyone wants to test read-only permissions it should be uh, basically the same and yeah i think that we can also uh, mm. Do something else. Uh, are there any other demos which have been already updated to configuration as code? I mean, to read on the configuration. Don't think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, other news is that bill of materials is finally up to date. So it means uh, that uh, Homeavi uses uh, Jenkins plugin bomb. Uh, now uh, there is a recent version of JCASC embedded in uh, version 10, right? So yeah, yeah, along with all other plugins, uh, we finally stabilized that. So thanks uh, to everyone, especially to team uh, getting it over the line. So now everyone uh, should be able to uh, their plugins with recent JCASC without a lot of hassle. Okay, any other news we are missing? Mm. Well, maybe it's relatively minor. Uh, yes, they released uh, plugin installation manager. Uh, well, basically it's part of uh, GCASC stories. And then um, we released we released a few patches. So, firstly, now there is a caching of downloaded plugins, which can be used for, uh, can be utilized, for example, uh, to speed up Docker builds or just common instances. So then we have uh, option to skip uh, um, uh, downloads if something fails, uh, but uh, implementation of retry. And uh, I also fixed the issue with transient uh, dependency resolution because actually before this patch, uh, the, the tool was installing plugins which were not desired on the instance. And we hit a bug with UI themes being uh, installed through a transient dependency in BlueOcean. Uh, so yeah, now it should be fixed, though it's just a partial fix. Um, the behavior of uh, dependency resolution is still not optional. There are reported bugs, for example, for optional dependencies. Uh, they are not resolved properly in terms of version control. And also collisions between transient dependencies on lower levels. Um, it won't be working uh, reliably. Still, it's a kind of improvement being compared to the previous state. Uh, yeah, as always, contributions are welcome. Okay, so ongoing development. Joseph, you want to, to, to talk about Secret Resolver, right? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. 
the, the only thing that concerns me in the, the pull request, again, is the introducing something that you might remove or might be confusing to users that exist. It might be hidden somewhere, yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, again, I put a lot of discussions with myself in to actually, for anyone reviewing it, to hopefully assist mm -hmm with their thoughts, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so. the thing you could do is you could go down to like, just have it one thing. So there's only one key would, which would, I guess would be base 64 and then it will figure out if it's a file, if it's a file, it will do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Um, or if it's a, a string, it will try and do that. But the problem is that you would get weird behaviors. So let's say the file doesn't exist and then it goes into the other logic. And then, yeah. Yes. But then you have to check if it's a path and it gets quite messy. Yeah, maybe we should just uh, update the, the prefix, something like base 64 file. And that's, that, that's one of the other options. This, this is really a thing where you can combine them actually. Um, because you might have a file you want to read in and then mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we should just support two and then don't support nested. Uh, but then you want to support nested because you might want to have a variable that's not obvious if the pa file path, if you don't want to show where it's it. <laughs> well, my experience with uh, variable handling in Jenkins, especially with Infinject plugins is that let's avoid nested variables. <laughs> But yeah, if there is no real use case for that, I would rather prefer to keep it simple. Uh, but yeah, if you see a use case for that, okay, let's try to implement it. There could be a use for it where you would have a secret that you want to just base 64, like a string. So that would be a secret that you would then have to, or a variable you have to resolve. So you'd need the nested thing. Mm. Of course, we could try and prevent the nested thing. Like you could, I could write some logic that would prevent the nested thing of these two together, like the base sixty four and the file sixty four. Yeah. So yeah. Or uh, maybe we should think about a bit more intellectual macro engine for resolution, uh, because I hit similar issue. So there is a pull request which basically is very related to that about uh, encrypted passwords. Uh, the one which I still cannot uh, finish, though, yeah, support decrypting credentials. And the, so, yeah, this is uh, the current implementation. So, basically, I have strings like that, which is also a kind of weird macro. So, maybe we could standardize uh, macro handling. Uh, um, yeah, it's really, you could write a, with the current one, you can write another replacer that researches for those things with the current thing that I have in my pull request, you can create your own and you can create mm -hmm. your own replacers and it could look for those things. Mm -hmm. um, it is a bit, it's another common library, but it, it has a lot of features for like, uh, for like doing string replacements and having multiples and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I actually, I needed to create a secondary replacer for having the, luck when people didn't have a f secret that was filled. So, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't that hard to, to get around that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, uh, this things are slightly isolated. Though. It is slightly related. Yeah. Yeah. So our resolution logic becomes more and more complex. And that's why mm. I think that at some point we should think about uh, either a formal uh, macro engine use extension points, etc. So similarly to token macro plugin. Oh, mm. yeah, actually. So yeah. you want extensions points. Okay, yeah, that, that could make sense. Well, it would help to break down logic a bit because yeah, I already hit the number of issues in tests when I was implementing this proof pull request. I'm not sure whether I even submitted the pull request, but yeah, I was uh -huh. mostly stuck uh, because of edge cases. So token macro plugin, uh, it basically implements uh, logic like that. And uh, foo is an extension point. So you can uh, create your own ones. We can, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we can 
we are almost there to have extensions points, but then at some point, why not just use the token thing, the token plugin, token micro plugin to, to do that work for us? If it supports the same stuff? Well, uh, in principle, yes. In practice, uh, this plugin had no support uh, even for pipeline for a while. So oh, yeah, okay. you can see the extension point right now. So I set the smart running, etc., and then, uh, for example, evaluate for abstract project. So it's what yeah. we had for Evans, and now we also have evaluate uh, for pipeline. Oh, okay, it doesn't really work for our use case. Well, yeah, technically we could uh, in, uh, introduce <laughs> dependency it. on the configuration yeah. as code plugin, pass configuration yeah. as code context. But mm, yeah, the thing that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The thing is that we, we, we're almost there actually on the other end. And in the, my pull request, I, I think it would take like one or two lines to add the extension point to like mm -hmm. resolve those extensions. And then because I, as I said, you can add any replacers and you can then just search for those replacers and then add them in. Yeah. Mm, so, I'm plus one for new extension point. That would be nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. It also so, would enable other stuff uh, that we have had people asking for, like, instead of the current way of, like, creating secret resolvers the way we do now, it, it, it would be nicer with more syntax, like, if you if you could, like, diverge mm -hmm. on that part instead. Yeah, like a, so, yeah. a vault subpath or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I would much rather have vault subpath and then, like, well, or vault colon and then something string stuff. That would be a lot nicer. Yeah, so something like that. Uh, so it's declarative. Is... Yeah, so it's declarative, like that it's happening. Mm. Yeah, kind of like kind of like the Ansible lookup plugins for Vault, where you yeah. kind of embed all of that in line. Also, for so it's easier to anyone who is a a configuration administrator to say, ah, this is coming from Vault. I should probably go look at Vault instead of like. Where do I look if you're using Kubernetes and Vault at the same time and some of them are coming from both places? Yeah, because yeah, right now it's so easy to fall into whatever false resolution. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, it's we'd rather to replicate uh, <laughs> the current logic and really start uh, enforcing something like that. It's kind of nice that you can have multiple strategies though. So like locally you can load it from the file system whereas um, in your actual production system you can load it from whatever Vault system. Um, uh, fail so point. That, that is nice. Yeah, that is true. So, mm -hmm. and, and so, I'm not in favor of removing old stuff that works because then we would have people that have workflows that gets destroyed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, a generic uh, resolution is uh, different. Uh, uh, prod uh, dev environments. We we've definitely been using that uh, for our use case as well. Like, yeah, we we use it as well. We we have a in our case we have a Docker compose that just have the environment variables loaded in and then yeah off you go. Yep. Yeah. So I think that uh, these approaches don't conflict with each other, but yeah. <gasps> Or maybe we could uh, introduce another syntax for one of, because unlikely you have three sources. Well, theoretically, if you deploy the same uh, instance, let's say in Kubernetes and Docker and locally for testing, uh, maybe, but yeah. So, yeah, anyway, I think that we need to review this pull request. Mm. Yeah, this one. Well, I think that it's kind of reviewed already. Uh, but yeah, uh, before we uh, do you want to uh, implement this extension points or do you want to just keep it as is and we can uh, build on the top of that? I, I don't want to, I would rather extend this PR because for what it does right now is, again, it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I don't necessarily like the way it's doing it. <laughs> Got it. And again, I, I want to try and add as little as, or not, not so much confusion, like for the users that are using it or would be using it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. 
So basically another iteration before we merge with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, thanks for working on that. It's a useful feature. Yep. Okay. System read permission. So do we have anything uh, staged for reviews, etc.? No. No, I know. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the only semi related one is the uh, log recorder um, in, in core for configuration as code. <laughs> That's cur it's currently the only thing that we use the Jenkins UI for is log recorders. Well, it makes uh, total sense to support that. Yeah, the only problem with that uh, for log recorder, uh, we system did permission. Are you able to configure new recorders or not? Because both approaches kind of make sense. Uh, with system read, can you, no, so system read can't configure recorders, it can just view previously configured ones. Okay. So I was just wondering uh, how much it helps because for example, if you want to diagnose something, usually you add a new log recorder. And in principle, it's still okay for the only permission because uh, you do not uh, add new functionality. You just capture existing logs at the same time. No idea. Yeah, I mean, one of our issues is that we use it, we lose our log recorder configuration as soon as it reboots. And it gets rebooted whenever patches can mm -hmm. apply automatically in Kubernetes. And... Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, we can figure it out later. But yeah, uh, view only is a safe choice. Uh, maybe not great for user experience, but yeah, at least it's definitely good from the like, permission standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, did we get enough issues uh, for plugins reported? Or do we there's need to the it? Pro there's probably plenty more that could have support. I just think that issues raised. And... Yeah, I started uh, running my demos uh, to verify uh, dark theme and um, uh, uh, tables to divs migration. But yeah, in principle, uh, I want to use the same demo to do scrap for system read permission and maybe reuse other demos uh, to have more plugins. For example, uh, yeah, we still have this uh, demo for cloud-based Jenkins distribution and JCask where we can spot check uh, all uh, plugins. We have embedded something like 200 ones. Uh, but yeah, it still needs some work. But yeah, just processing that and reporting cases where we hit them would be definitely helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, more testing needed. Okay. Anything else on system read? Yeah, so for plugin installation management, uh, yeah, just a quick update. I will be submitting more patches because I really want uh, to get rid of uh, custom plugin installation manager implementation in Jenkins file runner. And apparently I still hit issues uh, when trying to adopt it. So I will be submitting uh, a few patches, um, but uh, I can confirm that YAML configuration, etc., cetera, worked uh, pretty well. I also did some experiments with Dependabot uh, for YAML configurations using uh, the tool created by Olivier for infrastructure. And actually it works. So maybe I will uh, create such update flow because I'm not really keen to use PomXML as a source uh, for common users. Mm. It, works, it works pretty well for custom work packager, but custom work packager takes uh, ounce to build. 
um, and with plugin installation manager now we support for caches we can actually speed up the builds a lot so i would rather prefer to try implementing automated dependency management for plugin installation manager not for custom work packager so yet to be seen yeah hopefully we'll get it over the line Yeah, so depend on bottle I think I, I think it will be just in, embedded in the plugin installation manager. So there will be no new tool for that. And yeah. Uh, uh, so. Yeah, let's see. I'm not sure. Does anybody else use plugin installation manager in production now? We no, tried yeah. several times. <laughs> so yeah, we tried and didn't work. Mm -hmm. I think you fixed one of the bugs, though, the unwanted transparent, uh, yeah, the unwanted plugins. I, I'm sure it would work for us. I don't think we're doing anything that would cause it not to, um, just to see whether it's faster and um, be, if it was in the Docker image, we'd probably just use it. It's just yeah. because it's not the default in the Docker image. Um, and the main reason that would get us to move there would be automatic updates. <gasps> If we could get if we could get that and that, uh, well, uh, there is already a command which shows updates. Um, I spent some time uh, to get it working. And for example, uh, the recent patch for demo Jenkins config code was basically produced uh, by the tool. So this one update. Is it machine? Is it is it machine processable or is it human? Or is it well, it's uh, it dumps a text file and then a simple regular expression, and you get uh, this format. So the next step is to put the, this simple regular expression uh, right inside of the tool. So I created uh, yeah, uh, an option to generate a new updates file um, in available updates. So basically, the plugin manager will be able yeah. to generate uh, the list on its own without all this magic in YAML or plugins.txt. Uh, well, technically, it might be a bit difficult if we merge uh, a plugin management YAML and JCASC YAML in the same file. Uh, but yeah, as long as they separate, it's not a problem. You can always merge them separately. Like yeah, one thing I noticed uh, that uh, it still has some, well, it still has glitches with trans dependency management. So it will need patches before it becomes fully reliable. Um, but yeah, at least command for check updates, well, it's maybe 30 minutes to implement it. Yeah, so. I, think, I think we just specify everything anyway, just so that we don't get out of date plugins. Yeah. It'd be nice if we didn't have to, but Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, anyway, I plan to spend some time because uh, I need it for Jenkins File Runner uh, and for new edition of Custom Work Packager. I want to have uh, uh, two less implementations of plugin management I maintain. So uh, this still is a way to go for me. Okay. Uh, any comments about this story? Or other things? Go, go, go. <laughs> the only thing would be optional dependencies. Those would would be probably another blocker for updating, I would say. Yeah, optional Option. dependencies, yeah, they're here. <gasps> uh, yeah, I confirm that uh, I want to resolve it. Mm. So, uh, yeah, the problem that uh, it needs a uh, complete redesign of how dependency resolution works. So that's why I started from a poor man's patch, uh, just uh, change uh, the top level dependencies. Even mm. there, I hit some issues. So, for example, if you take a look at this pull request, uh, you can see that, for example, uh, if you use Maven, if you're familiar with Maven Enforcer, then whatever you do, find on the top, this is what you get. 
And if you use enforcer, if you have trans independence of high version, then you get an error. And uh, I tried to, to implement such logic in plugin, uh, sorry, in this tool. And actually I just uh, got an error in existing tests after that because uh, the logic of this tool is quite different. It still uh, tries to pull uh, the recent version from trans independencies. And I think we should stop doing that instead of that just fail the build. Mm. Uh, and yeah, that's just the beginning because yeah, basically you, we need to redefine completely how this logic works because yeah, uh, there are so many pitfalls in the current resolution. So if somebody still remembers graph theory from the university, it's probably the uh, right thing uh, to apply it. Yeah, I think I will just uh, take a code from Maven Enforcer or whatever and embed it in uh, the plugin because yeah, I think that it's better to not implement uh, another resolution on our own. Or maybe Jenkins core code base, let's see. Okay, but yeah, thanks for the feedback. So I definitely want to spend some time on that. So yep. any other ongoing development? Nope. Okay, so let's just take a look at the roadmap a bit. So I wanted to check with you whether we have all stories uh, are there. So there is definitely no story for plugin installation manager. Probably I will call it plugin installation manager 2.0, taking the break and changes in uh, how dependencies are resolved. And yeah, write uh, whatever manifesto for this version and put it on the roadmap. But the rest, so what do we have now? Uh, system read permission, then uh, pluggable configuration sources. Uh, but I guess that's all we have specifically for JCASC. Yeah. Uh, do we want to add something else? No. Okay, does anybody have something big in mind uh, that you want uh, to implement in the next six months? <laughs> Probably not. So, yeah, I suggest to spend some time at the next meeting, but yeah, I will integrate plugin installation manager and customer packager stories in the roadmap. And yep. Yeah, Basically the same for any other plugin, not uh, for JCASC. So my personal plan is uh, to have a roadmap officially approved at the next governance meeting. So not today, but in two weeks. So if there are big stories, you're working, uh, whatever, uh, whether it's uh, integrations with Vault or whatever, we can put it there. The small items we have, specifically user-facing items, uh, it would be helpful for the project. Anything else for today? No. I guess thanks everyone uh, for your time. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. See you in two weeks.